Okay. Perfect. We'll let a couple of people get in. Okay. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Megan. Hey, Lori. Hi, Molly. Hi, Sierra. Hello to everyone who is joining. I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Um, welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for joining this week's Small Business Essential um, webinar. It is Social Media Best Practices and Effective Marketing Hacks. My name is TJ Daniels, and I'm the director of the Iowa Women's um, Iowa. Iowa Center's Women's Business Center. The Iowa Center's Women's Business Center is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration. You will all receive an email after this event from my colleague, Sierra Smith, thanking you for attending today's session, information on how to connect to our speakers, as well as a form to complete. Please do us a big favor and take some time to fill this form out. This information allows us to continue providing free educational programming for small business owners in Iowa. Now go ahead and please take some time to locate the chat function on your Zoom screens so you could join the conversation by asking questions um, and or adding comments. Also feel free to introduce yourself and your business in the chat and include your um, website or social media page so we could visit and learn more about your business and network. Now for a little information about today's speakers. Um, one of the speakers are, is, um, her name is Mallory Cates. Mallory double majored, earning her BS in marketing and management from Iowa State University. Mar she writes SEO focused content pieces, creates effective digital marketing campaigns and executes social media and SEO comp campaigns to drive traffic back to clients' websites. Mallory is, always eager to learn more about the latest trends in SEO and all things digital marketing and loves taking on new challenges. She has been featured in several blogs for her social media and content marketing expertise. There's also Grace Horak. Grace graduated from Iowa State University with a degree in apparel merchandising and a minor in entrepreneurship. She is steadfast in implementing social media and digital strategies that help clients interact with their target market. What excites her most about her position as a digital marketing associate at Blue Compass is that it combines both her methodical and innovative sides. When she's not at work, she could be found thrifting with her family or watching a show with her boyfriend and cat, Nora. Thank you so much for joining us today. And the screen is now yours, ladies. Awesome. Thank you, TJ, for that. So yes, we are with Blue Compass. We provide clear direction for di brand's digital presence, and we do so through award-winning web design, development, and the digital marketing, which includes social media. Um, Al and I are super excited to share some social media best practices and tips for businesses. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, please ask through the chat feature, and TJ will let us know. Perfect. So take a moment to think with us. Um, think of a favorite brand or account that you follow on social media that you enjoy following. Think about why do you enjoy following them? You know, what types of content do you engage with most? And have you ever followed a link or made a purchase through social media? For me, I really enjoy following Vogue magazine on Instagram. My background is in fashion, so I am already feel connected to the content that they share. Um, I consider Vogue magazine a leader in the industry and so I trust their opinions and I keep coming back to the content that they share because they're always sharing the latest trends and one day I was scrolling through Instagram stories and an ad had popped up uh, for a Vogue magazine subscription and I was already kind of thinking about it and it was $12 for the year and it came with a tote bag so of course I purchased. <laughs> they hooked you. <laughs> yes they did they hooked me. Um, the definition of success on social media might vary from brand to brand, but what should remain constant um, for all businesses is reaching the correct target audience, which I would consider myself the correct target audience for Vogue. <laughs> um, 
and building the rapport with that target audience so they keep coming back to um, know more about you and what you have to offer. So that brings us to our first tip today, use social media for awareness. Social media is mainly used for awareness. You want the audience to know who you are and exist in that presence through brand recognition. And the goal here is for, brand, for your audience to continue to recognize your logo and or maybe the content that you're sharing online. Once your target audience is aware of your presence, they'll want to follow you and interact and connect with your content. So really connect with you and make that connection with your brand. And then ideally after connecting with you and engaging in the different types of content that you're sharing, um, they might become a potential lead. And we do wanna say that generating leads through social media might be a hard goal through mm -hmm. the platforms. Um, but it, if you have a strategic social media strategy in place, which we'll touch on today, um, that can be accomplished. But again, mm -hmm. um, referring back to this funnel, um, I was aware of Vogue magazine I interacted with their content, I wanted to follow them so I can connect with them and I did end up purchasing a subscription. Yeah, it's not, a lot of people wanna use social media right away to say, oh, I need to increase my sales. But just keep in mind, especially when you're just starting out, your first goal should be to let people know who you are. And then once you make that connection and you build that trust with somebody, they start recognizing you and going to your page maybe for more content um, and more information about whatever it is you're selling, your product, your service. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while to get those leads, but it is very doable. We have clients that that once you get them down that funnel, mm -hmm. kind of like we're showing right here, um, you will get that lead eventually through social media, but it does take time. Yes, so a way to get one step closer to the connection and leads is to choose the best platform for your business. And this is a huge question, a popular question that we get all the time. You know what platform is best for my business? Um, and we're gonna help you answer that today. Mm -hmm. So a few considerations to think about before choosing the best platform. What are you offering? Um, your product or service is going to influence which platforms you choose. Uh, for example, art and very visual products are gonna be best represented on Instagram because Instagram allows for more visuals. <laughs> Or maybe you're the face of your brand and, you know, maybe you're a public speaker, LinkedIn might be better. Um, and again, referring back to the awareness, connect and leads funnel. Um, our mindset is to use social media for awareness and not to push product, but you have to consider your product or service before choosing your platform. And who are you selling to? Of course, Mallory will get more in depth um, in just a bit on this, but you have to consider the demographic and personality of your target audience so you know their age where they're living and you know their personality their mm -hmm. interests where are your competitors so we recommend performing a little bit of competitor research when choosing a platform we're not saying that uh to copy them necessarily because they might not be setting the best example um but definitely take note of what types of content they're sharing their messaging visuals and maybe what advantage you might have and then, of course, consider your goals. Um, it's always great to have a, the right set of expectations for your business on a social platform. So now we're going to get into what platforms we're recommending. Um, and of course, the first platform most businesses think of um, when starting their social media journey is Facebook. And we concur. Rightfully so. Yeah, yes. Facebook is definitely, I know people say that it's leaning towards an older demographic and it won't last. That might be the case, but right now Facebook is still the social giant that most businesses need. Yes, it is still the most popular social platform and it really does provide great business assets like business manager, ads manager, and insights, which Mallory will talk about mm -hmm. in just a bit. Um, and then you have to consider the free real estate that social platforms offer. Um, there's a ton of users on the platforms, really any, not just Facebook, but any platform. So it's a really cost-effective way to build that brand um, recognition and that awareness. The next platform we recommend is LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is an awesome platform to build your credibility within your industry and network with other professionals to grow your personal brand as you know, yourself or uh, your business's brand. 
And if you do have employees, uh, this is a great opportunity for them to associate themselves with your organization and building unity and spreading that awareness piece again. And then of course, my favorite is Instagram. <laughs> um, we touched on this just a little bit, but Instagram is great for aesthetically pleasing um, industries such as retail, hospitality, restaurants, art and design, et cetera. Um, and because of the fun platform assets like stories, link stickers, and reels, um, you can really showcase what you have to offer in a fun visual way. Yeah, but kind of like you mentioned, you really do have to take a look at your specific business and what makes sense for you and where your customers are. So for example, we have an HVAC client, which HVAC is not going to do well on Instagram because those, those are not pretty to look at. We know that. <laughs> Our client always wants to say, what about Instagram? And we're like, no, even though that's where the kids are, the kids are not your target audience either. Nope. So you got to keep that in mind. LinkedIn, even for our HVAC client, doesn't make a lot of sense because they do have B2B connections, but most of their business and a lot of what they want to accomplish with their goals is that B2C. So those families that are on Facebook and they are hitting that a little bit older demographic, you have to own a home in order to need mm -hmm. HVAC support and that kind of stuff. So that's why... We really do look at the goals and what they're trying to accomplish on social media from a business perspective. Totally. So um, again, we're gonna we're gonna harp on this the whole time. You gotta know your audience and know what they want on social media. Um, so this is just a quick look at. We talked about demographics. We talked about who's on what platform. This is a graph from a survey that Blue Compass performed with sometime within this last year. Um, and it does show you like there are less younger people on Facebook, but some of those decision makers and quality um, potential buyers are still on Facebook, the 25 to 34, 35 to 44, and 44 plus isn't included because we know they're on Facebook. <laughs> that demographic loves Facebook. Yes. Um, and then obviously some of the next top platforms, um, Instagram is a big one, especially for some of those younger audiences. And it can be very effective to sell certain items. Some of those homeowner items, it's a little bit debatable, but again, if you have something eye-catching mm -hmm. and that is your target audience, that's a great place to be. Um, and then Facebook and Instagram are connected by Meta, so um, it's easy to advertise within both platforms if your business does that. Um, Snapchat and TikTok, they are for the youths, as we like to yes. call them. They are a younger <laughs> demographic, and in general, we wouldn't recommend having the types of ads that are purchasing ads on there. Those are definitely awareness platforms and getting people to know you if you belong there. You might not. <laughs> a lot of businesses don't, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Twitter and LinkedIn are very primarily B2B audiences. Um, Twitter is kind of its own unique beast that has specific little niche communities mm -hmm. within it. Um, yeah. So if you fit within that community, Twitter can be a really great platform, and it reaches among um, a wide variety of ages and demographics as well. Um, and then LinkedIn is going to be a little bit more older demographics, um, mid to older demographics. A lot of people have a LinkedIn, but again, mm -hmm. if you're not a B2B or you're not that speaker, author, head person of your business, um, it might not be the place for you. You just don't know. Um, yeah, that's one that you can definitely form a lot of connections on and they make that easier for you. Um, we are going to dive into Facebook insights because as Grace mentioned, this is where a lot of small business owners start on social media. Um, so this is what it looks like when you get into your Facebook business manager and you have that insights. It's a little confusing to look at, but this is going to talk to you a lot about your page reach, your page and profile visits, likes, follows, and then if you are getting into Facebook ads, which we'll cover in depth a little bit later, it'll show you how you're doing on your paid reach. So this can show you trends over time. Um, what we like about this is that you can kind of customize your timeline. You used to not have that ability. It would just show you the last 28 days. But Facebook has really, really invested into their insights because business owners want to know like which posts am I posting that are doing really well and they have this really great area that literally shows you every single post what kind of post was it was it a social media post was it a story was it an advertisement and they will lay out what was your reach what were your likes comments and results 
Notice that it does take a little bit of money. The two at the bottom there are advertisements. Um, and in most cases, Facebook is a pay to play platform. Um, I think the stats lately are you reach about, about 2% of your posts will reach your followers even. Even if you do convince people to get that connection phase and follow your business, they still will not see all of your posts. TJ, you have a question for us. Yes, I just wanted to make sure and confirm this is only if it's a Facebook business page. This is a Facebook business page. Yeah, we do recommend that that's something people look into if you're going to be running advertising at all. Um, that's something that we would highly recommend. You have more capabilities yep. from Facebook ads manager than from boosting a post organically. Yes. And we can touch on that a little bit later. We will go in depth on smart ways to set up Facebook ads. So we will touch on that a little bit more later. Great question. Yes. Um, and then here's just another quick screenshot of what some, some things you might be able to find in Facebook um, insights. This is like we said, your audience is so, so important on social media, making sure you're reaching exactly who you want. And then you can kind of see your top cities that you're reaching to. So this is a little bit of confirmation of, am I reaching who I want to? If I'm not, what can I do differently? What kind of things can I say differently on my posts or what kind of targeting do I need to put behind a post in order to make sure I am reaching my target audience? Mm -hmm. All right, our next tip um, for social media is to plan ahead. So jumping right into it, content calendars are something we are pretty passionate about here at Blue Compass. <laughs> yeah. me, me especially, I really like to have a schedule. Now he's a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I am very type A, so I like to have a schedule. And um, so we have a couple different excuse me, examples here of what a daily content calendar could look like, what a weekly content calendar could look like. But in general, just know that Posting on the fly is difficult. You yes. might make mistakes. Um, it's just better to plan ahead because you'll stay on track. It keeps you ready to go. If you think think about all the tasks you have during the day, at, like at the end of the day, you're not going to be like, oh shoot, I forgot to put out that Facebook post, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it keeps everybody on track. It also adds variety. So what we do when we create a content calendar is we have three to five main ideas that we like to post about. And it helps add a little bit of difference into your posts because people aren't gonna wanna follow a page or a business that's only posting the exact same thing. So we kind of mentioned like, um, at the end of the day, it's great to get sales from Facebook, but not every post can say, this is why I'm the best. This is why my business does great work. Um, you have to add a little bit of variety, which Grace will get into a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, and then a content calendar also lets you know if you do have multiple platforms, where are you posting? Because not every post needs to be the exact same across all platforms. Um, it also tells you if I have an advertisement, do I have budget, dates? TJ, you have a question for us. Okay. Um, the question is, would you say Canva, Excel, or a different app is best to plan content? That is a great question. We have used, um, what is, oh, I'm trying to think of the scheduler we used to use. Um, we actually would say that the best way to schedule is within the platform. I know that's really inconvenient because then you have to go to a bunch of different places. Um, so the content calendars that you're seeing right now, they're just the roadmap. They're just the plan. Um, and then we implement by scheduling within the platform if that's available or like LinkedIn, they don't have many scheduling features. We've used HubSpot, HubSpot that's the one, <laughs> yeah. um, in order to schedule that. Hopefully that answers your question. We don't, there are different scheduling things within each platform, Facebook and Instagram is right within the platform. And then Twitter uses um, Tweet, no, Tweet Deck. Yep, Tweet yep. Deck. Mm -hmm. We do recommend to our clients to just, if you did schedule a post, just you know, maybe check that day of to see if it actually posted because sometimes platforms can be finicky. So just yes. make sure you double check that it posted. Yes. Hootsuite is the other one I was thinking oh. of. Hootsuite is the one we stopped using because sometimes it didn't post. It did, it did not post. <laughs> yes. So great question. Mm -hmm. Um, and lastly, content calendars help keep your whole team updated. So some of you, if you are starting out on your own, um, you're the only person on your team, but if you do have someone who's 
maybe you hired someone to do social media for you because you needed to focus on your business. Um, this way you guys can stay on the same track of what's going out, what type of content is going out when, and that maybe if I know I have a post about like a promotion going out, I will, I'll choose not to post that day if something comes up. Mm -hmm. All right, so the top two questions we get when we talk about content calendars are, what do I post about? I don't understand what to post about and how do I add variety? How do I switch it up? Totally. So, Grace, take it away. Yes, <laughs> vary your content so that your target audience can keep interested in what you're sharing and what you have to offer them. So the first one is show off your hard work. So this is an example of Blue Compass just launched our portfolio, which shows off um, what we've accomplished with our amazing clients. And yeah, just find a fun way to show off your hard work, maybe use a testimonial of some sort. Um, it's kind of saying like, we're the best or people, people like working with us, but without being um, self-serving or super salesy about it. Yeah, you can't be too salesy all the time, but every once in a while you can have a humble break. Yes, yeah, <laughs> but we did. Yeah, it's always, it's a good, yeah. Highlight your team and their accomplishments or highlight yourself and your accomplishments. Um, keep in mind, social media was designed for faces and individual profiles, not for businesses. Um, so it's natural for users to want to engage in these types of pictures. So real images of real people, um, because that was the original design for how social media was intended to be used. So everyone likes to look behind the curtain and sharing your accomplishments and or your employees accomplishments accomplishments uh, establishes you as an industry expert and shows that you care about the people that work for you. Mm -hmm. Next, share uh, your seasonal promotions and new updates. Uh, this is a great example from Barntown Brewing. Shout out. Um, <laughs> they, we love this example because it gives the exact date of when their product is launching. So it creates a little bit of anticipation for that drop. Um, and with, you know, Christmas and everybody loves fall with those promotions coming up, um, just keep your loyal audience uh, informed of what you have going on. And instead of making posts attention grabbing, make them conversation worthy. So make people want to talk about you, you know, the word of mouth marketing, kind of marketing. Uh, showcase company culture. So this is um, our team in August. We do blue circle games every August. We head to a park for some healthy competition and play games with each other. Um, this is, you know, kind of an out of the box post. It's definitely different from the normal posts, um, that the content that we're posting. Um, but company culture, it's a bit of a buzzword nowadays, a good buzzword. Um, but again, showcase the wacky fun that you're having with you and your employees or even yourself and your family. Um, it just breaks up the informative and um, educational content and keeps your, your audience engaged. Um, we get a lot of con or comments from our clients too about how they like seeing familiar faces. Mm -hmm. It's fun to see, like normally we're seeing people in a business setting, which is great and we're very formal. So they like yeah. seeing the playful nature behind Blue Compass and what we do with our employees because at the end of the day you want to work with someone who has similar values to you mm -hmm. and your company culture really shows off um, your true personalities and your people really well. Yeah you're more than just the products and services that you have to offer. And create an out-of-the-box campaign. So this is a client of ours preferred pest control. Um, they, every October, have a spider contest, so people submit pictures mm -hmm. of spiders, um, and not everyone loves images of spiders. I'm one of them, <laughs> um, but apparently there's a niche audience on Facebook. They have a very unique community when it comes to their spiders. Sorry, I'm on this account, so I know yes. people really love, they look forward to it. It's spooky season, and they really, really take advantage of that by giving away a couple gift cards to people who submit the funky best. spider photos. I would love to talk about the criteria there. Like, how are they? They have a, so the <laughs> kicker is like, you have to send people back to your website. They have a whole page that talks about the criteria to submit. But yeah. I encourage you submit spider photos if you're, <laughs> if you're a nature person. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So scare your audience a bit or surprise them, I guess. Yeah. And of course, capture the work you do in the community, especially if you're a local brand, but even if you're not, uh, most people love to see what you're involved in, and these posts really tell a story without having, without much effort, um, and it really showcases your brand personality and what you stand for.
All right. Another valuable thing to share on social media is content marketing. So this is something that's free and valuable. Um, it's usually an article that gives your audience some information about your brand that they wouldn't normally know. So a great example is that we always like to say, give away some of your expertise. And we always have people push back on this and say, wait a minute, why would I tell people how to do what my service is? Because most of the time they just want to know what you're going to do. They don't actually want to do it themselves. So by giving them, this is an example of our HVAC client again, um, giving them some of those DIY tips about how to fix their AC, they might not be able to get there on their own. And when they don't, they'll say, well, I'll give Logier a call because they told me how to do it and I know that they're going to do it right. Mm -hmm. And they know what to expect when, they, when you get there. Um, another example, this is a foot and ankle surgeon. They are providing helpful tips that are related to their services. So top exercises to strengthen ankles after an inj injury. They see a lot of people that come in with ankle sprains and strange and, and might even need surgery, but maybe they're not to the point where they need surgery. They just need a little information about how to get better so they can get back to their weekend warrior activities. Yeah. Or prevent <laughs> an injury, which is always, always good. That's always good too. <laughs> Um, kind of the same vibe here, um, answering common questions that your customers have. So this is, again, the pest control client, one of our favorites. Yeah. Um, a common question when someone does have an infestation in their house is, oh my gosh, how did this get in here? So they give, they give away the information to the top five places where mice are likely to get in. It's that time of year. So by putting that blog out there in advance, you get people thinking about that, like, oh, I don't want mice. So let me check these top five spots that that they're telling me well, about. Almost a way, like if they do find mice then, then they're probably gonna call for pest mm -hmm. control, so. They'll think of you later on if you've given them helpful information. Mm -hmm. That creates a positive connotation with your brand. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. totally. Um, next, um, when you are giving away some of that content for free, consider shooting a short video. Video is really taking over social platforms these days. I'm sure that's not the first time you've heard that, mm -hmm. but filming a short clip and giving away just a little snippet and then convincing people to click through to visit the full blog is a great way to get users engaged and also, again, get your face out there. People are going to react better when they see three people having a discussion about a topic versus yeah. a picture that is probably a stock photo that clicks to a blog. Mm -hmm. It's enticing. Yes. And then lastly, content does not always have to be your own. So this is an example of a financial firm. They have a lot of clients that work with them in order to make sure they have a good um, financial stability before retirement. So this is a blog from somebody else that says, if you want to travel in retirement, here's something you should start looking into. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. And when, what I will say when you are taking advantage of content marketing is never forget a call to action because Although social media is about awareness, at the end of the day, we really want people to come to our website and check them out, um, see what you have to offer. Um, so whenever you are putting out these, this free information, say, visit our blog, you have to tell people what you want their next step to be in order for them to do it. I know that sounds like we don't give people enough credit, mm -hmm. but just by giving them that little nudge they'll have a, a lot better chance of clicking through and taking that ne next step. So visit our blog is a really subtle way to say, hey, we, want, we think you should read this information. It's just being the most clear with, yes. with what we want people to do. <laughs> and then this one's pretty obvious. This is talking about a summer sale. It gives you the information up front in the photo. It's really enticing and kind of funny. Mm -hmm. And then we tell you all about it. And at the end, it says shop now. That one is pretty direct. Like we said, you can't always say like, leads, I need sales, but in this instance, it totally makes sense. Yeah. And then this one's a little bit more subtle CTA. So this is a roofing client. Um, they have this tool where you can go online and look at different roof colors on your house. And so they're saying, are you thinking about your next renovation? This is a very specific mar market and a very big investment, but they're keeping that awareness. They're staying top of mind with their customers and saying, when you're ready to start planning ahead, we have a really great tool for you to utilize. And that way they'll think of you when they do decide it's time for that roof replacement. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Um, fun stuff. Yeah, fun stuff. <laughs> uh, so that's some of the things that you can do to mix up some of your organic content on your feed. Um, next, we're gonna get into ads. 
um, Facebook and LinkedIn ads specifically, since that's where most businesses are utilizing these. Um, so without further ado, like we said, it's a little bit of a pay to play market. So we'll go over some of the basics here. So the first thing you need to do is consider your goals. Um, like we said, you have goals for that organic content, but also your goals um, for an advertisement. So in most cases, your goal will probably be under the consideration phase for traffic. Um, that's to get people to click back to your website. And like we said, make sure you have a CTA for them to click back. The other one we typically use is video views, because if that is, if your post does have a video, you want people to see that and you want them to engage with that. So this is what that looks like. Um, on Facebook. And then this is the same version on LinkedIn. All platforms have kind of the same setup, but it looks just a little bit different. So again, here we'd probably pick website visits and go from there. The other thing you need to do is be strict on your top audience placement and targeting. So um, this is a big one because when you are setting up these advertisements, we don't want anybody to waste money paying for things and paying to get an ad in front of somebody that it doesn't make sense. How many times have you been on social media and you get an ad and you just think, why, why was I in your target audience for that? Yes. <laughs> so the more specific you can be with your messaging, with your images and with your targeting, the better that's going to connect and the better you're going to relate to that audience and more potential to get that lead. Um, so this is what that looks like on Facebook. It shows you exactly how specific or broad your audience is in that little dial there. Um, and it kind of gives you an estimate on your daily reach and your daily link clicks that might be a little bit inflated, but yeah, TJ, what questions do you have for us? Okay. Do you think blogs are beneficial? To, I have a couple, just FYI. Do you think blogs are beneficial to small businesses? I have considered creating one, but not sure how it would benefit my business. Great. I think, I think it's an asset to what you can share and showcase your expertise uh, through your platforms. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and show, again, another opportunity to connect with your audience and showcase your expertise um, and who you are. So I'd I was going to say, I follow a few different blogs for some of the things that I'm interested in. And because I follow the blogs for the information, I also follow their Instagram, their Facebook and things yeah. like that. So, yeah, you never know how far a blog can go. So. Mm -hmm. um, giveaways to get followers. Yes or no. I heard a few months ago, giveaways were not the move anymore. How do you recommend gaining followers? That's a great question. Uh, yeah, giveaways used to be a big gimmick because before Facebook changed their algorithm, the algorithm was based solely on engagement, likes, reactions, comments. And so giveaways really made people comment a bunch on a post and it would push it up in the algorithm. Well, Facebook has gotten smarter than that now. And um, so it really is kind of a pay to play um, scenario. Giveaways can still be fun though for your community of followers mm -hmm. that really like to engage with you. Um, like that spider example we gave, yeah. that's something they do once a year. Otherwise too, if you have a business that is really into community outreach and community involvement, mm -hmm. I think like for some reason, banks come to mind for me. They, they work with a lot of people in the community. Yeah. They're typically sponsoring community events. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a lot of giveaways, a lot of photo contests. Mm -hmm. um, if your business isn't big enough to start there, I would probably not recommend it. Or if you're willing to um, keep up on all the photos and all the things that come in. And again, you need to set clear guidelines or any type of contest or giveaway just to make sure that you're covered from that perspective as well. Start date and date, mm -hmm. all details. Yes, lots of rules and regulations that go with that too. So mm -hmm. great questions, guys. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, I'll dive right back in. Um, can't stress enough how, how being specific when you are setting up an ad is extremely beneficial. Um, my last little tip on being specific is Facebook and Instagram, they're both going to ask you, do you want to reach people beyond the target audience that you've already set up? So you've set it up, you said, I want to reach these demographics. 
I want to reach people with these job titles and these interests. And they're going to say, do you want to reach people beyond this? And you're probably not going to check that box because at the end of the day, you know your business a lot better than Facebook or LinkedIn does. And they'll say, oh, well, this person has this interest too. They might like it, but they might not. Um, so just keep in mind, you want to use every dollar efficiently. So that's something that we are recommending not to check. Um, and this is what that looks like on the LinkedIn side. The setup for an ad is a little bit different there, but it, it has sort of the same um, steps to it. We actually prefer LinkedIn ads if your business is valuable on LinkedIn because it's very specific. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook has had to dial back on a lot of those because of privacy issues and a lot of lawsuits that they're in. Mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn, people are giving that information willingly because it is a B2B connection type platform. So your advertising options on LinkedIn are going to be much more specific and narrow to reach who you're looking for. Mm -hmm. A lot more lead based in that situation. And then here's another example when you're setting up a Facebook ad in particular, there's so many different places that you could end up because Meta is connected to Facebook, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, and then they're also going to try to convince you to put your ads on their audience platforms. So one thing that we say at Blue Compass is if you are a client of ours and you're trying to run Facebook ads, you will only show up on Facebook and you will only show up where you will be prominent on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get mixed up in these other platforms because you have size for that image and your message specifically for this platform. Have you ever been in an app and you have that tiny bar at the bottom or the top and the image is clearly cut off? It's probably because someone clicked audience network and that app is part of Facebook or LinkedIn's audience network. And it's just a terrible ad because the image is not what it should be. So something to keep on. in mind. Yes. Perfect. And then one of the other things is to double check your delivery and how you're being charged. Facebook gets a little bit sneaky on this. They want to charge you on impressions instead of on clicks. And that's just typically not recommended to run ads for awareness. You want people to take that click back to your website, back to your contact page, wherever you're trying to send them for more information. Make sure you're actually being charged on the click and not on the impression and wasting money just with people scrolling through and just briefly seeing your ad. You don't want that. You want people to engage and be charged when they do engage. Yeah, um, I was going to say, do you want to explain an impression? Oh, kind of yes. Guess. Yeah. It's just when people see your yes. ad, not necessarily engage with it. Yeah. If for my beginners out there, the difference between an impression and a click, an impression is just seeing the ad and actually looking at it, there might be, it might not just be a scroll through, it might be they actually have to stop. But how many of you are scrolling, stopping, scrolling, stopping, and right. <laughs> going through social media in that way? So just double check um, that you're actually getting charged on the click. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. Um, LinkedIn is a little bit nicer. They will set that up to, to be charged on the landing page click instead of impressions automatically. So good job on them for that. That's what we want. <laughs> we charge by impressions, but that's not. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> And then lastly, again, you're going to hear this again, call to action button. So this is something that when you are setting up an advertisement, not only should you have the call to action within your copy and you're convincing people to click, but having that button really sets the, sets the tone and says, yeah. oh, this is something that I can go visit. I read what I needed to see and I like it. So now I want to click. Um, I always like to remind businesses social media is an interruption to people's day. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind when you are writing that post. It has to be exciting. It has to be something that not only catches people people's eye, but convinces them to take that next step and learn more about your business. Mm -hmm. All right, and this is what that looks like on LinkedIn. All right, so our last tip today, Google is watching. So we love social media, but we are an SEO first agency. So we have to get our Google plug in mm -hmm. um, and Google does index um, social profile bios. Um, so what do I mean by index? And this is the definition, at least Blue Compass's definition. Search engine indexes, collects, parses, indexing collects, parses and stores data to facilitate fast and accurate information retrieval. So in people words, Google has crawled your social profile bio. Um, and when someone types in, a search that contains your brand name or maybe a product that you sell, 
um, your social profile has the chance to show up in Google search results pages. So for example, um, a tailor was recommended to me. So I Googled the brand name and they didn't have a website, but they had a Facebook. So I was able mm -hmm. to find their business hours through their Facebook. Um, so in order to appease Google um, and get organic traffic to your profile, um, it's not enough to just have it live, make sure it's optimized. So of course, this is, this is an easy check off, have your brand name associated with your Facebook um, and then provide keyword rich context in your bio. So think about, I'll stay on the pests, pest control. <laughs> okay. um, you know, they might not know preferred pest control, but they might look up bug control or pest control. Um, so how are you, is your target audience searching to try and find you? You know, use those words in your social bio. I would say one other hidden um, factor with that is have your location. Um, mm -hmm. So often mm -hmm. people are searching pest control in Des Moines, yes. or I am planning a wedding, so I'm looking for DJs in Des Moines, mm -hmm. and I want them to be here. So, yes, totally. so having that location in your bio and even prominent on your page makes it very clear, like it will show your results locally mm -hmm. if you include where your service areas are. Absolutely. Yes, Valor. Um, and link to your website if you do have one. And we recommend using a trackable URL so you can track and monitor that um, traffic that you're getting to your site from your social profile. And of course, add the products that you're selling, um, add an image with that, and of course, make that description for those um, keyword rich as well. Um, and then add your business hours so people are aware of when they can find you or contact you. Mm -hmm. Facebook especially has really amped up what they allow you to customize on mm -hmm. your Facebook page. Yep. And that matters because that's most likely the second thing that's going to pop up if someone searches for your brand name. So we stuck with our pest control guy the whole way through here, but yep. <laughs> so if someone searches your brand name, your, your Google profile will show up, your website and all the things that you've optimized your website for. But secondly, in most cases, it's going to be your social profiles. So that's another reason why it's good to know which social pro profile should you be on and do social media well, but also make sure that that is optimized because people are searching everywhere for you. Yep. And you want to show up. Mm -hmm. And that is all we have today. And we're excited to answer your questions. Okay. So much information. Um, let us know in the chat if you have any questions, I'm sure. Um, we covered a lot, so hopefully we didn't yeah. get information overload. <laughs> yes. Um, one question that I do get a lot from clients, and I guess the answer would be different for different people, but how much do you suggest um, spending on ads when you're first starting out? You want to take that? Yeah, it's usually $10 a day. Yeah, we recommend. So if you have $100, we usually say to run the ad for 10 days. And something that we would recommend um, with clients, like we said, we like content calendars, we like planning ahead. Mm -hmm. And we work with clients with as little a monthly budget as $100. Some clients that are really, really big, they spend a lot more money. But if you have $100 to spend on social media, you can still put out one post, one ad per week. Mm -hmm. And usually like $25 is a good um, range for a small running ad. Yep. You can usually run that for two days, mm -hmm. maybe three. Perfect. Um, I know a lot of people talk about social, um, well, content calendars. Mm -hmm. Is there like a blank template that you have, or is there anywhere that you would suggest people to go find a template to create a social, um, media or social media content calendar? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm content kind of content kind of um, I would say that uh, we we use our own um, our own branded template for us and our clients. There are so many examples online, and a lot of those social scheduling platform tools probably have those assets available for businesses to use. We personally create them within Google Sheets. Um, just create it to look like a calendar and put it, plug in my, my colors and my words the way I, I like it to look. That gives us the most control and the most flexibility to move things around. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of Excel and Google Sheet wizards here. So that's what we like to use. <laughs> you can use weekly or maybe it is daily. It's just kind of up to you in mm -hmm. a six month or a year. But yeah. 
Um, and a lot of the times I tell people, Google it, because um, a lot of the times there's even specific social media content calendars to your business. So yeah. um, Google is amazing. Um, tools, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go. I was going to say one of the tools we like to use is Twitter is really good about putting out um, a calendar with all the weird holidays. So like you said, um, the ones that kind of relate to your business, we go through the whole Twitter calendar. And maybe if we have like a restaurant client, it's like, oh, this is when wine day is, this is when happy hour day is, this is when like cheese and charcuterie day, or, you know, if it's something that kind of relates to your business, that's something to keep in mind. There's tons of calendars that say like, these are all the weird holidays that happen within this month. And if something pertains to your business, it's fun to just kind of hop on board. Oh yeah. And have some fun, grab that. <laughs> We were just talking about that literally yesterday because there's crazy days like National Donut Day or Ice Cream Day or so there are so many different holidays out there nowadays to where you can promote um, your business specific to that holiday. Or even your um, company culture. On Donut Day, we bring donuts for the yeah. office and then it becomes a culture post, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I see. I would probably start making up days then because I'd be like, oh, today's free lunch day. <laughs> today free is lunch lunch day. <laughs> people will probably, I would be one of those people that would believe it. So. <laughs> okay. Another question that I, I literally hear people arguing about a lot is how many times a day or a week should you post um, on social media? And we could even say specifically like Facebook or Instagram. It's really up to you and like what you have going on for your business. So if you have an event coming up or like a boutique type of show that you're going to be at, you might want to socialize that, you know, twice a week for the next, you know, three weeks. So people will show up and come to see you. Um, but I would say at least twice a week, maybe once a week, if that's fine with you, it's just showing, it's just being present on the platform. Yeah. That would be kind of the minimum level. I would say multiple times a day is not yeah. usually necessary no. because like we said, your followers aren't going to be getting all of your posts anyway. And you might, um, you're, you might just be spending more time than it's worth. Yeah. Um, the other thing with that is organically post as much as you want, whatever you have the capacity for as far as advertising. Make sure you're not overlapping too much. Maybe you don't want to be competing with yourself with that same audience um, and driving up the cost for both of your ads. Yeah. Okay, here is a question. What is a trackable link to your website? And are those results shown through social media? Or is it something that we have to set up through our website? So this is a little more advanced. Not very new on the yeah. this one. Uh, so trackable links are really beneficial if you have a Google Analytics um, account that tracks the traffic that comes to your website. Um, this is a little bit harder for um, people that have startups or might be just starting out with a website. But if you do set up Google Analytics, um, trackable links will tell you which picture was on it, um, what social, or sorry, which source and medium were they on. So it was a social user and they came from LinkedIn or, um, and this was the message that I used in my campaign. Um, that's something that we utilize for clients because they're paying us to know which posts are doing the best. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say that's something super advanced. If you're starting out on your own and you're deciding what platform to pick, that's like, Step number five, that's level, level up five more times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, here's another question. I've heard and know that reviews are important. How do I send review links to my clients? So like through social media or email or how do you suggest? It's really up to you. You could even create a post if you have a certain mm -hmm. um, platform that you use or that you want reviews through. Um, but yeah, word of mouth is always great. And then I know I've received texts from like my hairstylist to say, hey, mm -hmm. if you could leave me a Google review, that would really be awesome. So it's just being transparent, I think. And but yeah, any way to really contact um, your clients or your target audience mm -hmm. if they've experienced your services or products. I'd say text and email would probably be the most prominent way, the most promising way to, to like, if you have that connection and you have that personal way to contact someone, 
they're much more likely to fill out a form or give you that review there. Mm -hmm. And I would say too, your Google reviews, if you do have a website and a Google profile are going to have a lot more weight for you and your digital presence than a social media review. Mm -hmm. If you only have a Facebook page, definitely be collecting them. There should be a certain tab within Facebook that you should be able to send people to. Mm -hmm. um, but a Google review is going to do a lot more weight if you have a website and a digital presence beyond just your social platform. Great question. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there a text marketing? Hold on, wait, sorry. Is there a text marketing platform you recommend for small businesses? I know one of our clients um, uses one, but I'm unsure of the name. But Maybe yeah. we can get back yeah, to you with that one, TJ. Can. Yeah, we can get back to you on that. No problem. Um, Hannah, we will make sure to get that answer to you. Um, do you feel that email lists are beneficial to businesses who reach more to younger audiences? 18 to 35 is my general audience. Email feel... lists. Okay. Sorry. Email lists, I feel like, can always be beneficial for a business. You can create remarketing audiences based off of an email list if you have enough of them. You can also create lookalike audiences in Facebook and LinkedIn if you have a large enough email audience. Um, it's a great yeah. way to just spread awareness of what's going on, keeping um, your clients updated. I know I've converted a lot through email just because I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I always check my email. I'm like, oh, it's this. And then I'm like, oh, I want that. So yeah, email marketing campaigns are a good way to like just keep that awareness top of mind. Um, beware, you might get filtered out into like a promotions tab or something like that. But if they've engaged with your email, it should come into their primary feed. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was going to say is to like make sure to test or check your email list and make sure it's not going to junk. Like promotion tab, yes, but junk, no. Yeah. But I would also say back to like the age demographic she specified. Um, yeah, I wouldn't probably do email marketing with older than 60, probably. <laughs> um, we I have many stories, but yeah. <laughs> so I'll get confused. <laughs> I think younger people are usually in their email a lot. So mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um I always ask our speakers um if there was one piece of information you would like our clients to know what would that one piece of information be? And um, Mallory and Grace, if you could both answer this for me. Can I go first? Sure. Um, my favorite part about social media is just um, the fun that you can have with it. So don't be intimidated, I guess. Um, and don't put yourself in a box too often. Uh, just be creative and make sure you're showcasing your brand personality through your posts. Um, so somebody else might, might not be sharing your content the way you want to share it, but I say go for it. I like that. Mine's kind of the same. I would say um, staying true to yourself on social media and not being afraid to show that personality. Mm -hmm. um, these days, people are going to social media kind of for a mental break. They want to see that like authenticity and um, they want to see faces behind a business. Um, and we're not saying go out and create a TikTok and yeah. try to become TikTok <laughs> famous for your business. But what we are saying is that people do want to know who is the face behind this business, especially if they are just starting out. They're like, why should I care? Mm -hmm. Always make sure that your message on social media has a purpose, has a why, and um, you're trying to provide value to your customers. And that's when they'll start to trust you. Yeah. And I absolutely am not um, an expert in this realm, but I will say, use the tools that are available to you. Um, and, like, don't be scared to click on stuff because guess what? You can't really mess nothing up um, with Facebook or Instagram. Um, there's so many tools out there. Just check it out. Um, I'm teaching a class now um, for our dream makers preparing your business plan and marketing and stuff like that. And I have a Canva Pro account and I'm paying a monthly fee, but I'm not clicking in everything that I could use. So Canva has banners and yeah. thumbnails and all kinds of stuff. Um, if you're paying for it, use it for sure. But there are so many free things out there. Um, sometimes I say just Google. Um, yeah. 
spend your time to research. If, if you're passionate about something, learn about it. Um, YouTube is great for learning things, but yeah, absolutely Google. You'll find a bunch of information and probably more resources than you started with. So, and like, check out what some people in your field are doing on social media, because, you know, their, their posts are pretty or they're consistent and they're get, gaining followers. Just see what they're doing and see if you could kind of replicate what they're doing. I mean, you don't always have to recreate the will. Um, mm -hmm. Copy it if you see somebody else that's doing it and they're doing it well. Um, so <laughs> I, social media to me is like difficult. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people get stuck on trying to find the pretty picture or the perfect post. Yeah. And in my opinion, there is nothing perfect. There will never be the prettiest picture. Sometimes you just have to post it and move on with your life. Yeah. What do you guys feel about that? Like, do That's should people? Advice. Yeah. And I have to think about that personally sometimes. Too. <laughs> but, but yeah, it doesn't always have to be, um, yeah. The people best. don't want the perfect they want no. the authentic especially i feel like covid really shifted people's yes. mindsets on forgiveness for a business online as well mm -hmm. they want they would rather see something real mm -hmm. than a stock photo and we've actually run tests on that that people are a lot more likely to click on something blurry something that might not have the best lighting versus a stock photo of the same thing so mm -hmm. they want to see the real face the like just the people you're connecting with so transparent it's yeah reality mm -hmm. oh my gosh thank you so no matter what <laughs> get started get started today yeah, totally. start your account start posting become the subject matter expert in your field like jeez mm -hmm. okay so I am giving the right information if I've ever coached you. Good job, TJ. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes even <laughs> myself snippets, on the back. Video snippets are really good too. Um, I mean, video, as we know, is taking over the platform. So going back to that pest control client that we talk about, we say, if you can get videos in the field, we want to post those. They yeah. took a video of these termites oh squirming in this wood. <laughs> and even though it like gives me the creeps, someone on their social platform is going to love that and they're going to watch it and engage. And if we put a link with that, they're probably going to be a lot more likely to click. So totally. it's very off the cuff, just a short little, little video can do go a long way. A, a behind the scenes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much for taking the time today to share the information with our clients. And thank you to um, the audience for being here, engaging and asking questions. Um, so I wanted to take a quick second to update you um, with some information about some of our upcoming programs. We have a small business accountability group every Thursday. You could attend in-person or virtual. Um, on October 13th at 5 p.m., we have a learning lab um, so it's, it'll be um, speed networking. Um, this Thursday, we'll be talking about the sales tax um, update within the state of Iowa. And then we'll be able to network and talk more um, after that. So if you would like more information, please feel free to check out our website, theiowacenter.org. And with that, I will close with the one piece of advice that I have for us all. And that is to love what you do and do what you love. Thank you everybody for attending today's session and have a great afternoon. Thank you.